Good morning, everyone. So um, this morning we'll be talking about Philippians, but before we get there, um, we'll go ahead and do announcements because there's announcements this morning. Um, So there are order forms for Easter flowers. They're pink in the back. So if anybody would like to order flowers for Easter, um, go ahead and pick up a form in the back. And Miss Dawn has an announcement as well. I figure I'd do that first because I would forget. Are there any other announcements this morning? Okay. So this morning, we're going to talk about the, the, Paul's letter to the Philippians, and we're going to talk about where our home is. And we've heard many different um, wording for home, all the cliches. Mother Teresa said, love begins at home. Home is where the heart is, said by uh, Pliny the Elder. There's no place like home, said by L. Frank Baum. Home is the nicest word there is, said by Laura Ingle Wilder. So that's just a, a few. There's several that can describe home. And many of us dream about different places of home. We dream about beach homes, or myself, I'd rather have a, a cabin in the woods. But wherever home is, here on earth, that's not our final home. Our home is in heaven, and that's what we'll be talking about today. And um, the psalmist it tells us that we will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives, and our earthly home will pale in comparison to the inheritance that we have in heaven that awaits us. So um, it's, it's not easy being here on earth. We will have adversaries that will try and steer us um, differently, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well this morning. So let us um, prepare our hearts and mind for worship this morning. morning everybody. Ken, thank you for that beautiful piece. Our call to worship this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil, or fade. 
This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Please stand if you are able to sing our opening hymn. God greets us this morning in our house of worship. At the end of our race, we will be greeted in our heavenly home. Please take a moment to greet one another in whatever way feels most comfortable to you. Jesus Christ, our Savior, brings us peace with God. Amen. Our call to confession this morning. During his whole life on earth, but especially at the end, Christ sustained in body and soul the anger of God against the sin of the whole human race. In response to his sacrifice, let us confess our sins to get to God together. Most merciful God, whose Son Jesus Christ was tempted in every way it was without sin we confess before you our own sins. we have hungered after that which does not satisfy we have compromised with evil we have doubted your power to protect us forgive our lack of faith have mercy on our weakness restore us in trust and love that we may walk in ways of delight in doing The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins on his body on the cross, so that we, free from sins, might live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Please stand.
any of our kids and children at heart that would like to come up. So this morning I brought a friend with me. I brought Sadie. Well, sort of. I figured the church would frown upon if I actually brought Sadie. So I brought a stuffed animal that looked very much like her. She's a Cocker Spaniel. And she hangs out with me pretty much all day long um, when I'm home. So we do everything together pretty much. She's always by my side. We go for walks together. Um, and she likes to watch movies too. So any guess what her favorite movie might be? No? Lady in the Tramp doesn't come to mind. She's a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> but she brought another one of her favorite movies that she likes to watch. And we just watched it the other day. All Dogs Go to Heaven. So, have you guys seen that one? No, oh, good. You should watch it. <laughs> anyway, the, the, the dog in, in there is um, Charlie B. Barkin. He is this one that's up on the corner. And he goes into business with Carface Carruthers. That's this one down. And it's not a very good partnership because Carface decides he's going to keep all the profits from their riverboat gambling business. So then he decides that Carface is going to have Charlie killed. So and then that happens. So guess where Charlie goes? Because all dogs go to heaven. So that's where Charlie goes, but he wants to seek revenge on Carface because of what happened. So he, Charlie finds a watch and he sets it back and he gets to come back down to earth because that's what he's going to do is enact revenge. But when he comes back down to earth, he finds a little girl that he befriends. Her name is Anne Marie and he rescues her kind of for the wrong reasons for his own um, gain but he ends up really liking her. And then a whole bunch of things happen in the movie, but at the end of the movie, Charlie sacrifice, sacrifices himself to save Anne Marie. And then um, Charlie gets to go back in heaven, because when he came back, the, um, the Whippet Angel dog told him he can never go back to heaven. So he does get to go back because he saved Anne, Anne Marie's life. So that's a little bit about that story. Now for us, it's Lent, so that, that story made me think a little bit about a couple things. One, what we're talking about with Paul, with the letter to the Philippians, because Paul tells us that our citizenship is in heaven. That's where our actual, I know you're yawning, me too. <laughs> Time change is rough. And um, that's where our home is. Our home is up in, in heaven, because that's where our citizenship is. The other thing I thought about with this is Jesus is also in, in heaven. He died for us. And that's what we're, um, part of Lent is getting ready for, preparing for when Jesus dies on the cross for us. He dies for our sins. And Charlie, the, our dog in the story, yeah, he was a rescuer for this little girl. Jesus is our rescuer. He'll, he's going to come back from heaven and rescue all of us, save all of us, um, so that we can go to heaven, to our heavenly home. So that was our story this morning. Um, so if you get a chance to watch All Dogs Go to Heaven, it's a cute movie. And, um, and as we think about Lent, we also want to think about, where, about Jesus and where our home is, that we're, we're going to join Jesus in heaven someday. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this Lenten season. Thank you for remembrance of your son as we prepare for his, his death, knowing that he died for us. He died for our sins, the ultimate sacrifice for us. And we look forward to the day that we join, join Jesus in heaven in our eternal home. We're here on earth for a little while, and we know that our citizenship is in heaven, and we look forward to being with Jesus for all the, the days of our lives. Amen.
our prayer of illumination this morning. Lord God, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, our hands to serve it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Testament reading this morning is from Psalms chapter 27, verses 4 through 6. One thing I ask from the Lord is only do I seek, or this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. So mi casa is su casa, so my home is your home. And that's a phrase that I heard in Mexico from our host while we were down there for Pittsburgh Theological Seminary's U.S.-Mexico border mission trip. So where one calls home and where you live is, is very important to the Mexican culture. So one of the first things that we were asked is where is home and where do you live? And there, those can be two different places or one of the same. Where home is, is defined as the place where your belly button fell off. So, <laughs> for example, our host, um, she's from, she was born in Chiapas, Mexico, but she lives in Agua Prieta. So for me, technically, I'm from Pittsburgh. My home is Pittsburgh because that's where my belly button fell off, even though I consider Valencia my hometown, and I live in East Butler. So we introduced ourselves that way to just about everybody during our mission trip. And the, the, those are the same questions the U.S. Border Patrol would ask us as well. Um, where is your home? Where, where do you live? And what is, what is your reason for being here is the other question they would ask us. Our scripture passage this morning from Paul's letter to the Philippians, um, chapter 3, verses 17 to chapter 4, verses 1, Paul is giving directions to where home is. And you don't have to go past the Dairy Queen or turn left at Albuquerque, our citizenship is in heaven, and it's an upward call. And we stand firm and await for our Savior who will come from the heavens. So let us hear God's word for us. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. Just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is in their stomach. Their glory is 
in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may these words be your words and your message for us today. Amen. The Philipp Philippi is a colony of the Roman Empire. So their allegiance is to the House of Rome. Their money is Roman currency, and they pay their taxes to the Emperor of Rome. They are citizens of Rome. Another cliche, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, and they were. They were familiar with many Roman customs and ways of, of life. Paul reminds them that their citizenship is in heaven, and they should act as heavenly residents while they reside on earth. This is the message for us as well. It's pretty easy to look around our country and see the patriotism for America. We are United, we use United States currency and we pay taxes to the government as well. With that coming up very soon. The 4th of July is fast approaching where we celebrate our independence from Britain with our backyard parties and fireworks. But just as Paul told the Philippians their citizenship is in heaven, so is ours. So do we speak highly enough of our heavenly home? In a few verses before our reading this morning, Paul declares that I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward to Christ Jesus. So this is our upward call. Now there are some challenges and obstacles along the way. So if we look at some of our classic board games, yes, I was thinking about the upcoming game night, we'll see that there are stumbling blocks that impede the goal of winning the game. So Christmas, Christmas Day last year, I was playing board game Sorry with my granddaughters, Peyton and Bailey. And the objective of that game is to get all your pieces from start around the board safe at home. And the first person to do that wins the game. But um, if you draw a Sorry card, then you get to move someone else's piece that is not safe at home back to start. And I can let you in on a little secret, they are not sorry. <laughs> and they're also seven and eight, and they cheat too, but that's another story. Another popular, <laughs> another popular board game is Monopoly. So has anybody actually finished a game of Monopoly the whole way? Wow. I applaud you. We have not. So, so the the premise of that game is to um, buy properties, strategically buy properties, build houses and hotels. So then when someone lands on that property, you can charge them as much rent as possible. And the goal is to make everybody else bankrupt and you're the only person that has money. So, but as you're going around the board, you might end up landing on a space that says go to jail. And if you do not have a get out of free jail card, then you go directly to jail, you do not pass go, you do not collect $200. Now for us, we know our lives are not a board game. We're faced with many real life dilemmas that deter and distract us from our heavenward goal. So Paul is in jail and not board game jail. He is incarcerated and this is a huge hindrance for him as he visits some of the churches that he founded, including the church in Philippi. And he wrote the letter to the Philippians while he was in prison. And Paul is gravely concerned about a group of people that he refers to as the enemies of the cross of Christ that are corrupting the Christians with their ideals. So if these people are not already in Philippi, they will be soon. And Paul planted several churches, included the church in Philippi, and he cares very much for the, the new to their faith Christians. And Paul states that the the enemy's God is in their stomach. So this is a God with a little g and not our one true God, it's a capital G. 
And Paul is agonized to the point of tears that this group of people, these enemies of the cross, will steer Christians towards earthly desires and away from their heavenly citizenship. The uh, earthly desires that the enemies of the cross were um, food, food and sex were their two main um, things that steer us away from our heavenly goal. In the letter to the Romans, Paul, Paul writes, we hear these same concerns. And the letter says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And that made me think of yeah, a CD that I have at home that's Guns N' Roses. And it was released in 87, and it's called Appetite for Destruction. So I think the name of the CD says it all right there. But Axl Rose sings about Paradise City with these lyrics. He says, rags to riches or so they say, you got to keep pushing for the fortune and fame. You know it's a gamble when it's just a game. You treat it like a capital crime. Everybody's doing the time. Take me down to Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me home? Now, I don't think that they're singing about the upward call home that Paul is referring to. Axel clearly says, take me down, and please take me home. At least he said, please. So this is the overindulgence that Paul is talking about to the Philippians, because it will lead to destruction. So for the enemies of the cross, their bodies are central. Their destruction of the body is death, and death of their life. Paul and his followers are fixated on the cross of Christ and a life that is in heaven. Now, we are tempted as well to overindulge in desires as well. And there's any number of examples. But I thought I would use food because it is Lent. And um, that's something that we focus on during this time to begin with. So who all here eats all the rolls at Texas Roadhouse? Maybe even ask for seconds. So they're really good. And our portion sizes are immense. We were just at Monroe Hotel the other day. We brought home, I don't know how much shrimp. So the local Italian restaurant that's near us serves a plate of lasagna that's so big we can get three meals out of it. And that's part of our culture in America. Everything is over the top. It's a very overindulgence with our food. But how many people do not take leftovers home? But if you do take them home, just throw them away later. So the USDA reports that Americans waste 30 to 40% of the food supply. So that sounds excessive to me. I don't know what, what you all think. So when I was in Mexico with Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, we saw very little waste of food. We, while we ate well, we did not overeat for the most part. And I can talk about the churros later. The food scraps and leftovers that many of us throw out, they compost those. And the coffee beans that Cafe Justo roast, it produces um, shells that separate from the coffee beans during the roasting process. Those shells that are waste are then collected and sent to the Trabaja Women's Co-op and Community Garden, where they're added to the soil for the vegetables that they plant. So we could incorporate some of those examples and practices for us as well, because we waste so much here. We are a country of excessiveness and, um, with a, many, many things beyond food, um, from internet to our cell phones to, but uh, I picked on food this morning. Now this passage is included for Lent because the opposite of overindulgence is abstinence. And abstinence is a word that nobody really likes to hear, has negative um, conno connotation. And there are many people that do not look forward to Lent. The idea of fasting and giving up something is not appealing. And I grew up in the Episcopal faith. Our faith tradition was, is, for, uh, for many, um, that we didn't eat red meat or chicken on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, or all the Fridays during Lent. And some people will fast on both Ash Wednesday and on Good Friday. We would also give up something that we enjoy, like chocolate or watching TV. And as a kid, that's asking a lot to abstain from something that I really enjoyed. 
So I still observe this practice today. And this year I gave up fast food. So yes, this one will sting a, a little, as it should. It should be a hardship. So what is the point of giving up something during Lent? The young adults here at Valencia Presbyterian experienced fasting recently during their 30-hour uh, famine for Team World Vision. So they participated in several activities, including devotionals. And during the devotionals, they talked about um, how fasting brings one closer to God, strengthens their relationship, and they also talked about and confessed that they hunger for relationships with each other, others, and with God. So those are some of the same reasons that many people give up something and fast during Lent as well. But it may also be said that many people give up something and or fast during Lent to imitate Jesus. We remember Jesus' hardship and temptation in the desert. Matthew 4 describes Jesus' journey into the desert led by the Holy Spirit, and tempted by the devil. And Pastor Jim's sermon last week was about the wilderness experience. In the desert, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And after the first temptation, the devil taunts Jesus with stones, and then the devil commands Jesus to turn those into bread. Jesus responds with, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we are followers, followers of Christ, and when faced with temptation, it's a good reminder of Jesus' words to the devil. Paul also knew the importance of following Jesus. And in his letter to the Philippians, he tells them to imitate Paul himself. And we probably have heard this, this saying as well before, do as I say, but not as I do. Well, Paul is telling the Philippians to do as I say and do as I do. And at first that sounds egotistical and arrogant, but is Paul not an imitator of Jesus Christ? Paul is a role model for the, the new to their faith Philippians. He also tells us to look to others that are living a godly Christian life as well. We need, we need good role models in our lives to run a good race. So don't lose sight of the goal and prize of our citizen that is in heaven. Now at the end of our race called life, our earthly bodies will be transformed into spiritual bodies. God formed us from the dust on the earth and breathed life into us. We are reminded on Ash Wednesday that we will, we will return to dust. God's providential power created us in his image. His mighty son, Jesus, will return for us and transform our bodies for heaven. Paul tells us that we will eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Raising the dead is God's sovereign authority. He raised his son, Jesus, from the dead and bestowed that authority upon Jesus to raise us from the dead. We know Jesus died on the cross for us, transforming his body with nail-pierced hands and feet. We will be transformed like Jesus' glorious body and raised to heaven, where we will dwell with him face to face. We are going home. Another song that came to mind Daughtry, he sings about going home in a song called Home. I've always thought of Daughtry as more of a, a secular mainstream band, but the contemporary Christian satellite radio station, the me message that I listen to, um, plays Daughtry's song. So these are a few verses from the song Home. It says, I'm staring out into the night, trying to hide the pain. I'm going to a place where love and feeling good doesn't ever cost a thing. And the pain you feel is a different kind of pain. Well, I'm going home, back to the place where I belong and where your love has always been enough for me. I'm not running from. No, I think you got me all wrong. I don't regret this life I chose for me. But these places and these spaces are getting old. So I'm going home. Well, I'm going home. And we may not know exactly what heaven looks like, but we can be assured that it's a place where love resides. 
we will be afforded a great inheritance in heaven. Heaven is the home where we belong, our true citizenship. So as we prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection during Lent, we're reminded that we will also die and be raised from the dead. Jesus will return for us and transform our bodies into gloriousness like his. We have many earthly entice enticements that will tempt us. And the enemies of the cross of Christ do not take a day off. We stand firm in our faith, stand together in solidarity, and remember that our citizenship is in heaven. Home sweet heaven. This is our upward call. Amen. So let us stand and affirm our faith as Christians. This is what we believe. I believe God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. Please be seated. As we come to our joys and concerns, um, let, let us be praying for um, the family of, of Roma Park and her recent passing. Um, are there other joys and concerns this morning? What is on it? Yes, Anna Mary. What is his name? We will pray for him in his continued um, healing. Yes. We will pray for Roma's family. Yes, we'll pray for Roma's family. Yes, um, it's a, a loss for everyone here as well. Um, as a member, pray long, long time member for family for everyone here as well. Let us um, bow our heads for a little.
silent prayer. Dear God, this morning we lift up people especially to you in their needs and concerns. We lift up Anna Mae and Harry and their medical concerns and, and um, the stress that those cause. God, you are the ultimate healer. Bring comfort, bring peace. Be close to, to both of them in this time. And we pray for, for Dana as he's improving with his, with his health with COVID. We pray for continued health and continued improvement. Um, COVID has affected so many people and it's and it's it's not over yet. So we pray for all those affected with COVID and especially Dana and thankful that he is doing better and continue to heal and work in him to do um, better in his health. We pray especially for the family of Roma Park and her passing. Um, we pray for everybody that is here as well. She is a part of Valencia Presbyterian family as well. And we pray for, for everyone in their grieving during this time. We're reminded of her and her husband, Wayne, the, the role models and everything that they have taught and been um, a part of this church. And I um, look forward to hearing more um, wonderful memories about Roma and Wayne in the, the days coming forward. But we pray for, for the loss, for the, the family, for everyone here during the, the grieving process. We also pray for the Ukrainian-Russian war. So we pray for the soldiers that are on both sides for a peaceful resolution. So in this time, we cry out to you, God, for your help. Mr. Rogers' mother would say to a young Fred Rogers when he was scared to look for the helpers. So God, we thank you for the many people that are helping the Ukrainian people that are fleeing and seeking shelter and those that are caring for the wounded. And we pray all these in Jesus' name. And we pray using the prayer that Jesus taught us. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. So this morning for our offerings, all that, all that we have, God, you have provided. So the letter to the Hebrews reminds us, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So just as a child shares his prized treasure, we share our earthly riches to those in need. We bring forth our tithes and talents, sharing in person or online, praising the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. And to, to de dedicate the um, offering, this prayer. So, dear God, please accept these gifts offered freely and generously to do the will of your work here on earth, in this community, and in this church. We ask for your blessing on how those gifts will be used in your creation and for your glory. Amen. So let us stand and sing our closing hymn.
forth in peace, living each day on earth, following the example of our Lord. Jesus Christ, knowing he will transform us, redeem us for our heavenly home, our true citizenship. Amen. down through the pandemic.